I'm Troy Locke, the Plexorcist, and I'm drinking at most. All right, everybody, taking time out before we get this show started that uh, I want to thank Reaper Apparel for having Dranimos be a brand ambassador for their clothing line. They got good stuff. They got t-shirts. They got hoodies. They got beans. They got lots of great stuff, encouraging everybody to break out of their comfort zone, live their best self, and Hey, it's something I try to live every day. Now, be sure when you go and you're finishing filling out your order, use the code Drinking at Mo's, get 10% off, and the link and the code will both be in the description. Let's fucking All go. right, I had no problem hitting the button that time. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Drinking a Mo's. Big Mo here. You know the drill by now. YouTube, like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good shit because YouTube's algorithm is a pain in the ass. We're most places you can find your audio podcast too. Today, I'm excited to have with me the Plexer Sis. How are you doing? Doing well, man. Thanks for having me on. You're very welcome. I'm excited to have you on because uh, seeing some clips lately. It's becoming obvious to me why they call you the Plexorcist. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm excited not only recording with you now, but the next month or so, both you know, outside of the podcast and with you know wrestling in general, June is a big month. Like, yeah, yeah. I have a lot of lot of stuff planned. I have five like really big shows uh coming up in June. So I'm uh I'm excited to talk about it and uh kind of share some stuff with you. Oh yeah, no, I'm excited. And you know, I've actually got two shows that I'm going to next month. One of them actually being AEW Collision. They're finally oh, coming, you know, just across town from me. So that'll be fun. And then I think the same date as one of your shows, I'm actually going to a show for Sammy Callahan's promotion, Wrestling Revolver. Oh, okay. Very cool. So yeah, that that's always a fun time. But before we get too much into the shows, we will get to that. Sure, sure. First thing I like to start off with everybody with is what got you started as a fan? And then what got you making the leap into the business uh so the first time i ever watched wrestling uh my my older brother got me into wrestling and uh we always like watched like um you know like smackdown and like uh old like tapes of like ecw and stuff like mm. that so that's like uh that's how i started being like a, a fan of it just from my older brother um who was into it like during like the attitude era and stuff and kind of mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah uh so but making the leap into the business uh it was when i it was a match actually i watched uh samoa joe versus kenta kabashi oh uh in roh and that was uh kind of was like oh no i want to do this no uh, way. yeah so then it was just like uh you know got in shape for it and then just kind of started uh started training and stuff and now i've been I, I know this gets released at like a later date but uh i you know today is two years since i debuted so yeah i was gonna say i just saw that post i'm like all right this is kind of yeah. kind of cool i'm getting to talk to you on the anniversary yeah, yeah, it's been uh, two years, uh, and then ninety-eight matches. I have two matches this weekend, so it'll be a uh, full hundred by the uh, by the end of the end of the month. So it's been good. It's been busy. Uh, stuff's been really picking up, so it's it's really nice. No, that's awesome. And one other thing, I mean, we talked about you're known as the Plexer How did that come about? Because I mean. Watching the 
clips and stuff than I've been able to. Sure. You know, you, you can tell why, but how did it come about? Uh, so the my original nickname, because oh, I've always had the mullet in, in wrestling. So like the uh, the gimmick before was uh, Mr. Business in the front, murder in the back. Uh-huh. And I kind of just wanted to like evolve the character to be more uh more evil more like sinister so like just being um like generally like pretty spooky uh and then kind of just i don't know just rhymed no. it from there yeah, yeah I, I don't know it it kind of just like thankfully was one of those ideas that kind of just like worked immediately because mm-hmm. I feel like with like monikers and like nicknames and stuff, it's either like works like right then and there, or you kind of have to like condition mm-hmm. uh, like an, an audience to, you know, to like it or appreciate it. And I already had one that was like good. So like, I don't know, thankfully it, it, it took off because it's really cool. And, oh, yeah. I no, I, I... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no. Like, uh, like, Guys like The Undertaker and stuff, like, are, mm. like, I don't know, big. Like, that was, like, one of my favorite wrestlers, like, back when I was a kid. So, like, to be anything kind of like him in, like, the realm of spookiness and, uh, you know, doing my own That's... twist on it. No. Hey, that, that makes sense. And, you know, much like, you know, Undertaker and there's been a few others, you know, he had that... uh evolution of the undertaker you know there's the different iterations and you know that evolving because yeah i you know come to understand that first little bit can be kind of a feeling out process you know seeing what works and you know when you when you land on something that does it's like okay here we go yeah yeah and you know like with the like with my move set being what it is, where it's like a lot of technical wrestling, and then you know all the throws and stuff. So it kind of mixes really, really well. Oh yeah, and you know I, we'll end up talking about this one promotion that I believe the clip was from a little later. But sure. The the one that really jumped out to me was one where you you suplexed a guy. And then all of a sudden I hear, I believe it was you yelling, eat shit. And just, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was from Pro Wrestling Magic. That was uh, the last show in May. Uh, the, so it, it's become like a thing where, uh, like, me and my group of friends, where we like, it's like uh, our own like little clique. Mm-hmm. Yeah. where it's uh we were supposed to do this like gimmick called ESAD which is like uh shorthand for eat shit and die um but then it just kind of evolved into all of us kind of saying eat shit die slow like in our matches uh so like i don't know sometimes we sprinkle it in on like shows that we can you know mm-hmm. use vulgarity and stuff Gotcha. Yeah, and hell, I my show, I I don't hold back on the language. I oh like, yeah, I should have. Oh, I mean, you, you brought it up before I did. I should have. I should have asked if I could uh if I could curse on here. That's my bad. <laughs> no, no, you're good because hell, myself. Um, there's that uh, swearing like a sailor thing. I yeah. mean, Navy veteran here, so I mean, I am one, so I got to kind of. Gotcha, gotcha. Yep. All right. So now into June 22nd. June 22nd. That was one of the, I believe that was the one, the big one you wanted to talk to me about. Yeah, yeah. So I have uh, three shows that day. Ooh, three in a day. All right. Three, yeah, the little triple shot going. Uh, So... (laughs) Uh, at the first show is, uh, SWF, Mm. um, where I am, uh, wrestling for the cruiserweight championship. Okay. 
Uh, then it is pro wrestling magic, and I'm wrestling for the junior heavyweight championship. Okay. And then UWA Elite, which is for the tag team championships. Okay. I know uh, I just saw a poster. I wanted to say this show that I saw was actually for uh, June 1st. Yeah, June we were... 1st is the Battle of the Brewery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and Jeff Cannonball. That yep. another person I'd love to have on. Yeah, he's uh he's awesome, man. Uh I'm very grateful to uh be able to like tag and you know learn from a, a vet like him because he is he is just a incredible talent, incredible mind for the for the business and what can work in like different aspects too. Oh yeah. And so you said you have a show for that same promotion just on the 22nd, you know. Yep. Yeah, they're doing uh, three shows uh, in June. Okay. They're doing the 1st, the 15th, and the 22nd. Okay. Okay. So that, that, hey, solid. I don't see a whole lot of promotions doing hell more than one. Yeah, yeah. There's one down in Texas that I've been becoming good friends with that they run every weekend so you know when uh, a promotion can run more than once in a month that's something yeah uh for the spring into the early summer they do uh, a few like a handful of outdoor shows which is like what the battle of the brewery is what the oh, okay. 15th is going to be uh and then they also do the middlesex county fair in uh in august so uh, and that's like a full week, like every day there's wrestling, which is really cool. Nice. So yeah, that's the, that's the highlight of my years, uh, the Middlesex County Fair. I oh hell, I can understand why. So the twenty second, we'll talk a little bit about each sure. one of the shows. The one with the uh, going for the tag titles because I'm a big tag team wrestling fan. Sure. Right? Hell, growing up, it was. Uh, I think I see the to, Road Warriors right there. Road Warriors, yeah, my all-time favorites. And, you know, we evolved into, you know, we talked about ECW, you know, the Dudleys and stuff. So I'm, I'm just more of an Eliminators fan. guy myself. Uh, what? I'm more of a the Eliminators guy myself. Okay. I Hey, when it comes to original ECW, yeah, you can't go wrong with them. So what are you looking forward to with that? Like how, you know, for people that might not be in the area that might not know so much of the buildup, what, what you got going on there leaned into that match? Uh, so it's a tag team gauntlet. Um, and it's like all hardcore rules. Ooh, right up my alley. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited. It's uh, there was, I was in the gauntlet last, Last year when it was like just singles um and that was really fun it was like the first time i ever did like anything uh hardcore uh so i'm excited to get back and especially with jeff cannibal who's like deathmatch legend i uh i'm very excited well i can understand yeah hell even a freaking gauntlet you know having yeah multiple potentially multiple matches in one night, you know, all being under hardcore rules. That's man, like I said, right up my alley, you know, hardcore and deathmatch stuff, right, right up my damn alley. Like hell, I love telling these two s short stories involving death matches. I ended up watching one when my mother-in-law walked in. And she just, the look on her face, is she was just like, isn't that illegal? And I'm like, just, just iPad. You, you got your iPad, just yeah. sit down. And then one time for uh, my friends over at Matt Tremont's promotion, uh, my wife was sitting down with me, and they had one of the death matches on. And it involved carpet strips. And somebody got Irish whipped into them, and my oh, wife's just like, oh. "Yeah." 
So, a couple funny stories for, you know, at least funny for me, being around people that aren't really so much deathmatch fans, or really fans of wrestling in general, and then they yeah. just happen to come in during a crazy spot. Yeah, my uh, my sister-in-law, because me and my, when me and my brother, like, hang out uh, at his house, like, we always watch, like, old FMW mm. uh, tapes, and, like, watching her, because her only experience with wrestling is, like, from watching me wrestle. So, like, a lot of it is just, like, technical wrestling. Um, so, when she saw, like, you know, barbed wire exploding death match, she was <laughs> going insane <laughs> over it. Oh, I can imagine. And hell, I've been lucky enough to get to talk to a handful of people in the death matches. You know, hell, I got John Wayne Murdoch over here, one of his wrestling buddies. That it took me over a year to get that one done. God damn it, I'm persistent. <laughs> then, <laughs> you know, Alex Colon, Madman Pondo. I've literally lost count of how many people from H2O I've had on, like Anthrax, Alex Stretch. Those were some good ones. But yeah, no. That, um, the tag gauntlet for, it was a UWA U, uh, Elite. UWA Elite. Okay. Yep. Do they you know, put their stuff up on YouTube or they got some streaming thing. Oh, uh, yeah, they... Ha Let me... Somebody... Oh, good? Okay, we're good. We're good. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, they have a YouTube channel, yeah, that all the shows get put on. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna have to go subscribe to their stuff because... It, Absolutely. It definitely, it definitely piqued my curiosity with that because I've been talking a lot with uh, MPX Wrestling down in Texas... And they got a show coming up called The Purge, literally a week before your tag gauntlet. And gotcha. it's like a whole, kind of like how Extreme Rules used to be, where every match had some sort of hardcore stipulation. That's that entire show. Gotcha. So I'm like, I'm definitely going to have to be going and subscribing to them. Now there's two other match your two other matches. There let's start with the the one for the cruiserweight championship. Yep. So, so it'll, yeah, what do you got there? It'll be uh me versus uh Brando Lee. Okay. Uh, and, and what do you how like the lead up to everything? Uh the Really, really hasn't been that uh, that much of a of a lead up, but just but just one of those that just yeah, just one of those uh, things that that fell into place uh, just the right way, and really excited right? for it. It's gonna be oh, uh, it's gonna be fun. Oh yeah, and you know, hell, you've uh, and correct me if I'm wrong. I believe sure. uh, you not too long ago actually you already have a singles title. Uh yeah, I'll, I'll just get it real quick. Uh, it is the my first title, uh, the Sanctuary Spotlight Championship, uh, in uh, the Sanctuary Stunt Studio in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. Uh, nice. All of their uh, all their shows live stream, um, on uh Friday nights on YouTube. Okay, that's an impressive looking title. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it's beautiful. I love it. Oh yeah. Now, the cruiserweight title. What was the promotion for that one again? It, it was a uh, SWF. SWF. Okay. Yep. I've definitely seen some of their stuff, and one of their wrestlers that that I believe I've seen on posters on your Facebook page actually follows me on uh, X or Twitter or whatever the hell whatever the hell they call it now but uh, now the the other one it, it's another title it was led to Junior Heavyweight yeah it's the Pro Wrestling Magic World Junior Heavyweight hmm. Championship okay so who are you going up against there it's uh, Trey Miguel in a cage 
Oh, damn. Yeah. Oh, damn. Okay. That's yep. that's going to be something. Yeah, so it's a singles match, then a cage match, then a hardcore tag gauntlet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you got some uh, pretty big Saturday there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, that's like Pro Wrestling Magic on IWTV. Ooh, you know what? My friends over at H2O got me back into Pro Wrestling TV. Or no, not Pro IWTV, duh. I was thinking of my friends over at Warrior Wrestling. They used to stream their stuff on Pro Wrestling TV. So I was thinking of one gotcha. step together. Yeah, there's but, a yeah. now it feels like there's a million streaming services for wrestling. Like they got like Premiere and and Fight, and it's just yeah, too much. I'm not very uh tech savvy. Not a very <laughs> tech savvy guy myself. Oh God! Like I think uh, New Japan and Noah both got their own. Uh, those are got... those are impossible to use. Those oh, are yeah, no that. New Japan's one, I had it for a while, but then, like, there was a period of time where it was, like, impossible to use. Like, it just was not working. And then I think I got it back one time just so I could watch Wrestle Kingdom, and that was about it. But, yeah, yeah there's a I'm, ton of it. Yeah, they, I don't know, it, like, not to get super like uh whatever but like i don't know sometimes like it like uh depending on who like is your card distributor like sometimes it'll just flag it as fraud just because it like charges mm. from like out of the country and stuff like that it's just i don't know it's too much they like i wish that when they launched like new japan strong with it being its own u.s television show like it would be more consumer friendly to us in the united states yeah but what I, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually, I had to go through uh, PayPal to get it to go through. Like, do it just straight from a PayPal account instead of a card? Yeah. Hmm, maybe I'll try that. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, I also have uh, two shows as well. I don't know, like, it might, this might come out after the show, um, but it is a big debut for me. Uh, June 1st, I'm wrestling for uh, Wrestling is Now, the uh, oh, Spanish the announce SMT team. Promotion. Yep, I'm debuting okay. at uh, at Winter Circle, um, which will be another double shot. It'll be the same day as the brewery just, show. Yeah, the brewery show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 very familiar with uh, that promotion because, well, one one of my first big interviews that wasn't from uh, people here local to me was actually with the SAT. Oh, okay. Who was it? And then I've actually done, it's been a little bit, but I've done some stuff for a couple of their shows for like, you know, social media tours. That oh, they sure. Do. I've done some stuff with them there and helped was even kind of semi-involved in a storyline one time where people would, you know, be like they were hacking into a show. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. That, that was pretty fun. But yeah, no, that's going to be exciting. I'm going to have to keep my eye on, on that one, too. Because oh, yeah. I've been trying to get them, get them back on in hell. Anybody from that promotion, because I think uh, Joey Conway, I've had him on. I've had a few other he's people awesome. from that. Oh, yeah. No, he's very, very cool guy. Also, just an incredible talent as well. Oh, yeah. The the character he has going, it's, it's, oh, yeah. it's something special. All right. Now, I love with the, with the show, I get to, in the process of it, learn about new places and new promotions that I might not have been as familiar with before talking to people like uh, sure. pro wrestling magic. Not yep. one that I've 
been uh, exposed to, but now that I know IEW TV, definitely going to be checking them out. What his uh, what's a pro wrestling magic show been like? Been like for you, you know, being involved there. Um, so I kind of drew the curtain back a little bit uh, a few months ago when I cut a promo uh, in the ring. Um, I started from at that company that was like one of my first companies I ever, you know, worked for outside of like, you know, training and, and stuff like that. Uh, so like I started with that company from, you know, setting up chairs, setting up the ring, like, you know, starting the mornings at 9 a.m. and not leaving until the shows were done and, and cleaned up everything. So it's like for months and then got on and then worked my way steadily, you know, up the card and like, now I'm in a position where like I am, uh, you know, wrestling some of the, you know, the best talent in like the, the Northeast and like really have been like, you know, just becoming like the, you know, the future face of this, uh, of this brand. And like, that's kind of been like a, you know, like a kind of like a storyline, but real thing as well. Just cause like, I love, uh, this company. I love the, you know, the, the feeling that this company can like give people, um, you know, like not to, you know, uh, be like cliche or like, uh, you know, whatever, but it is, it truly is like magic. Like this company is, you know, magical. Um, yeah. And like the, you know, the stories that this company tells and like the rivalries between like, uh, Darius Carter and Smiley and like Alex Ryman and Moth last year uh, is just some of just really awesome storytelling that I feel like is kind of lost like at the level that um, you know indie promotions are at where hmm. it's kind of just like it's it's not just like match 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 it's like what the match means to like the you know the people in them and you know all that so Oh yeah, no that that is something that uh, is missing from a lot of independent shows because you know a lot of them it is just you know they might have a storyline here or there but the vast majority of the cards seems to be just thrown together like okay we got these people here you're going up against you and then let's so on. Yeah. And, you know, there's nothing uh, particularly wrong about that. I like having oh, yeah. the, the, you know, especially, you know, when matches are like, I guess, thrown about, it, it can be fun to like, you know, think about like, oh, how is this match going to play out or, um, you know, whatever, or what story, um, you know, the guys are, you know, going to try to tell and all that. But yeah. I don't know I, I love, I love rivalries. I love like guys, you know, having clear cut, like, this is like how I feel about you going into this match. Like I, I, I love stuff like that. Oh yeah. No, I'm, I'm definitely right along with you there. Some of my favorite, as far as independent stuff, a lot of my favorite matches I've ever seen have had that aspect in them. Like there's one, at least here in Omaha that God dang, it's been, I'm trying to remember how many years, but it's been like a few years and people still talk about it being like one of the best matches that's ever happened in, in the Omaha, Nebraska. Gotcha. Is that where you're based out of Nebraska? Yep. yep. Oh, I, th I thought you were uh, based out of Ohio <laughs> just cause uh, you know, the Sammy, uh, the pro wrestling revolver, Sammy Callahan. Oh yeah. They, I mean, they do the Dayton shows. They seem to, for the most part, flip flop between Dayton and Des Moines. Okay. And I tend to, well, I'd love to make a Dayton show, but I tend to try to make it to as many of the Des Moines stops as I can. Gotcha. Um, yeah, because I, I hmm. am actually making my. Ohio debut in July, but okay, but uh, you know we get to talk about that later. Uh, but 
Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just love that uh, this company can tell stories and like the fans are like super into it. Like we were uh, like in December for like our biggest show of the year. We didn't have any TV talent at all, but it was the culmination of all the stories, you know, going into the, you know, the next year and it was standing room only. So like it was it was cool to have that feeling of like, no, they're here for us like they're yeah. here for this group of guys um no. and like i don't know that that was really cool to me uh, oh, to see no. so many people there because like you know we do draw well but like that was like the biggest crowd i've ever performed in front of so it was uh no it was it was awesome oh yeah no it's it is something special like yeah you love you love it when you know tv talent come in and you know you draw a big crowd there, but when people are as invested in the product as a lot of those fans were, and they come in regardless, and you get that many people in, that has to be an awesome feeling. Yeah, yeah, it 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 is, you know, um, especially because it's like a lot of the guys on you know the card, like the younger guys, like we all kind of came up through the, the company together. Like we were wrestling on pre-shows that didn't even make it on IWTV. And now like, we're kind of like in storylines. We're like in like the, you know, the, the inner workings of this, you know, of the stories and of the, of the whole company in general. So it's, it's very cool. Like, uh, especially like when fans, you know, will come up to us and just be like, you know, you've grown so much since the first time we saw you here. And it's like, it's cool that they're like really watching and they're like invested in us and like us getting better means a lot to them. Uh, mm. Which is, you know, it, it's really fulfilling. It, it's something like I haven't really gotten it really anywhere else, honestly. No. And you know what? I believe I actually saw a post speaking to that from a, a fan. Uh, well, a couple of them that uh, you were in where it talked about that, you know, seeing people progress and we was the front row mafia. Yeah. Shout out to the front row mafia. Those guys are so cool. They, uh, I don't know. I, they, they were really nice guys, but yeah, they, they come out to all the, like all the pro wrestling magic shows, all like a bunch of shows in, uh, you know, the tri-state area and stuff. And like, yeah, that, you know, they were guys who came up to me and they were like, you know, you get better and better every show. Like, you know, you're like really becoming like a, you know, a mainstay here. And that's so cool to watch. Like you come from like a guy that was like, you know, wrestling on the pre-show to like a guy who's like wrestling for like the world, you know, a world title and like really like, you know, wrestling some of the best that this company has to offer. And like having fans like say that, cause like, I feel that, like, I feel that it's cool <laughs> that like, I'm I'm on the you know the the come up in my career where it's like yeah. it's really starting to like get traction and, yeah um, you know but to hear a fan say like kind of mirror my you know my feelings about my career to me uh you know means a lot because it you know it means that like someone's paying attention someone's watching you know it's not just me screaming into the void you know oh yeah no that I've had my own little ways with with that with the podcast so i i kind of in my own way get get the feeling like oh god the one that always gets a laugh out of people was i was with um my parents one of my siblings and their kids and my wife and we were all at the zoo here in omaha and all of a sudden somebody you know somebody recognized me from the podcast there and oh wow and my wife was like, what the hell was that? And I'm like, uh, they, the podcast. And then, like, the look on my parents' faces was like, they were wondering. And then, you know, the, the reaction they had when they heard, you know, the podcast was why they recognized me. Like, that almost meant more to me than the people recognizing me. Because yeah. my my parents 
let's just say when it comes to me and pro wrestling, they've always had that attitude of like, well, it's not getting him into trouble. He's sure, happy. Sure. Let fine. So to see their reaction to see that, you know, my joy of wrestling and doing the podcast is actually in some way paying off like that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's a, a lot. It's a, it's a cool feeling. And like, you know, my, my brother, uh, you know, comes to like a lot of the shows and, and stuff. And like when he saw it like that, like, you know, fan, you know, come up to me and like, talk to me and like, you know, they go on and on and on. And like, he wears like, uh, you know, my, my merch, like to the shows and stuff. And like, people will come up to him and like, talk to him about me, like not knowing that he's my brother. And like, yeah. that's so cool because like that he's the guy that got me into wrestling. So like, it's, uh, you know, it's cool to me, uh, to have, for him to have that moment of like, Oh, Oh, like this is actually like, you know, becoming something really cool. Oh yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, that's a, that's a really cool feeling is like when like your passion, like people see that it's like starting to pay off in like a real way. Um, yeah. and like, it's not just like, it's fulfilling you, but also like it means something to like the broader, uh, yeah. know, broader scope of people, which is, uh, you know, th it's really cool. Oh, yeah. All right. So I got two categories here. One's a name game where I name off some people. You give me quick thoughts on the people. Sure. I met. And you know what? I try to theme it towards the guests as much as possible. And, you know, the name The Plexorcist got me thinking of how to theme this. And each of the people I'm going to mention are all known for suplexes. Sure. So, give you the name, quick thoughts on the person. First one, one of my personal favorites, the human suplex machine, Taz. He's the whole reason I do suplexes. So, shout out to Taz. I am a huge Taz mark. I'm a huge hook mark. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, as an ECW guy, like he, because he, he was shorter, you know, than everyone else. Yeah. And like, I'm, I'm five, eight. So like he, seeing him like be a badass and like throw dudes who were like twice the size of him. I was just like, bam, bam, God, that, like yeah. yeah. Like he was like the guy. So yeah, I, I love Taz. Oh yeah. Like, ECW, I was a huge fan. I almost, they were scheduled to come to Omaha one time, and this was during the dying days of it. And mm -hmm. yeah, like a lot of shows around then for them, it got canceled. So yeah, I never got to go. But I actually just recently saw on YouTube a video of the last ever ECW arena show for them. Hmm. Like I'm gonna could have send to send me a could you send me a link when you find it? Oh yeah. No, I'm definitely cool. gonna be looking at looking it up again. Yeah, no, I'll definitely send you the link because I'm trying to uh, I'm I can't even remember who but wait. No, one of the first people one of the first people in one of the first matches was actually uh the uh, Blue Meanie. I love the Blue Meanie. He was such oh, a nice yeah. guy. He was like oh, the yeah. first like name guy to like compliment my mullet. But that was like years and years ago. Like when I first started <laughs> training. He's such a nice guy. Oh yeah. No, I've heard lots of good about him. All right. Next one. The Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle. Uh his TNA theme was the most goaded theme of all time. Also <laughs> the him with the Amur collab shirt where he's screaming on it is the sickest t-shirt ever. Uh, oh, and, yeah. I, and I hope to find a bootleg of it soon. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, he's just, he's epic. I mean, the, the uh, documentary that they put on Peacock about him oh, yeah. uh, is, is uh, an incredible watch. And it's like, 
very moving. And like oh, the yeah. things that that guy had to deal with on top of wrestling with a broken neck, like the broken neck was like seemingly the easiest part of it, yeah. <laughs> which is it, insane. It was weird to think about it that way, but it, it yeah. was. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. Uh, so I mean, yeah, shout out to him. Oh, definitely. I'm, but uh, speaking of the documentaries they've put on uh, Peacock, those they have been doing some really damn good ones. Oh yeah, the, the Kurt Angle one, the uh, Cody Rhodes one. I haven't seen that one yet. That one, and then oh god, okay, the Cody Rhodes one and the Bray Wyatt one. They, I don't get teared up too easily. Those two have moments that just did it for me. Yeah. Because, oh, God, uh, the Cody Rhodes one, they, there's a point in there where, you know, they go over when uh, when Dusty was uh, dying. Yes. And they talk about, you know, being in the hospital. And it's not like, you know, in the movies where it happens somewhat quickly, you know, you're going in and out of there for days and practically memorizing your way to the room and everything. And that one spoke to me because my wife and I were pregnant with twin girls and they weren't due until November of that year. They came in late July. Oh, and they only, they only made it about a week, but for that entire week after like I went back to work thinking you know i'll save my paternity leave for when they come home sure so, like i would go to work i'd come home check on my wife take care of the dog then i'd go to the nicu and then i'd be there come back home go to bed same thing and yeah i to this day anytime i go near that hospital my eyes go right up to the window that I would stand at when I was taking a breather. And yeah, I could literally find my way to their, what was their NICU rooms without even thinking about it, if they'd let me. But yeah, no, those documentaries they got on, to, whoever they got in charge of making them, man, give them a damn raise. Yeah, that's they're uh, they're awesome. Oh yeah. Well, now that I'm off of the tangent I was going on. <laughs> all right. Next one. One you know more current. Chad Gable. Uh, I don't like that he slapped Otis. It hurt me because <laughs> I oh, love Otis. Oh, dude, Otis is so damn lovable. Yeah, I uh, well. You know what's crazy is that him and Otis like have been best friends and like wrestled like at at the Olympic trials together, uh, which is so so cool that they get to like or got to tag. I, you know they're probably done now, but uh, and they're gonna make like Team Angle 2.0 with the Creed brothers. But uh, yeah, I mean Chad Gable is just like one of those guys where it's like I feel like the same way with LA Knight where it's like they really need to pull the mid card belt trigger on them like really soon oh yeah um, no, and there's it, been people saying that for the better part of a year or two yeah because like was it it was i guess it was two manias ago already it's crazy but uh when he did the roll through german suplex on braun mm. i was oh. like oh like i thought they were gonna pull the trigger like right after that no um, yeah. but now it's like over a year since then and they haven't so i mean I don't know. Uh, yeah. we'll see. But he's he's incredible. Uh I loved um uh, you know uh American Alpha. Mm. Like that his first run with uh Jason Jordan was awesome. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh yeah, I I liked uh I actually liked Alpha Academy a lot. Like when it was like even like adding a Kiritazawa was awesome. But I've actually got to meet a Kiritazawa once. He's he is incredible, and like he is like the perfect example of he made his art. Now let him make his money. 
Yeah. Where it's like he is, you know, doing like the funny little dance thing now, but it's like that dude had wars, like put on wars, like for years oh. and years and years for oh, no yeah. money at all. So like, let's just let him make his money. <laughs> oh yeah. No, he, the, the wars he's had in places like Dragon Gate and stuff yep. like that. Yeah. No, definitely. All right. Last but not least, I actually have a signed figure from him up here. Jeff Cobb. Jeff. I wish that he was on AEW more. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'll say, because I like watching him a lot. Uh, he did the pop-up deadlift gut wrench. Mm. And, I mean, that spot is incredible. Uh, but, yeah, he's very influential to me, personally, just because he's just so damn strong and so damn good that I just want to be just like him. Oh. But, yeah, he... Uh, I wish that he was on AEW more because, like, they did that little stint where he was on, like, three weeks in a row and then just never again. And, like, I just, yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot of New Japan talent that I would want on. Oh, yeah. You think with the, the working relationship they'd have or they have that they'd maybe be able to fit him in more. I, I actually, I got to meet Jeff Cobb once when. My podcast got invited to uh, Warrior Wrestling when they had their St. Louis stop a couple of years ago. Mm. And he was going up against, uh, well, he was going by Jonah at the time, but Bronson Reed. A legend. A legend. Oh, dude. I actually got to do a short, a shorter episode with him that night with uh, Bronson Reed. And, oh, God, nicest dude. But another uh, guy that, who should be IC champion. <laughs> oh, totally. Like, as much as I'm thinking they're probably going to have Sammy win on Saturday, I want Bronson Reed to win so damn bad. But that move that you talked about, Jeff Cobb doing with the yep. that he did that to Bronson Reed that night. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah I that's... got I got footage of it somewhere on my YouTube channel. But yeah, nuts. Yeah, that uh, I started doing like the deadlift gut wrench, but I walk around the ring like carrying the guy first. Like, inspiration wise, that was like the inspiration was the pop up deadlift. Uh, just because like I definitely couldn't pop someone up and then catch them and then do that <laughs> yet. I definitely have to work on it for a while, but yeah, that that the spot that I've been doing is like a direct inspiration of that. Cause it's just def deadlift gut wrenches are sick. Oh yeah, totally. All right. Now I have some random questions. Sure. Some, some might be wrestling related. Some might not be. Some cool. have absolutely nothing to do with anything we've talked about so far. Awesome. So I give you the question. First answer that pops into your head. Cool. First one, craziest in match moment for you? Uh, craziest match moment was it was at technically it wasn't in the match because it was like at it was right after the finish. Yeah, uh, but it was uh the match I had with Tim Dynamite at super crazy pro wrestling watch the youtube channel um but it was uh like i'm a very hated heel there like i i wrestle very heel like i like get yeah. booed out of the building all the time um but the cheers after he like hit his finish and pinned me like right when the bell rang like it was so loud i couldn't hear the ref like right next to me like as close as my hand is to my face the ref's face was and wow. like that was the craziest moment where it's like damn we like really got them like oh, that is yeah. so sick that like we were able to do that um that was like the craziest uh in match moment that that that, that counts that would count yeah, the second one would be when I wrestled uh, 
Darius Carter. Like just looking like like from one corner to the other and like seeing him there was just like this is insane. I can't uh, imagine. I can imagine. I know I I've witnessed my fair share of crazy stuff, including, you know, a couple spots with fire involved. One those involving always, those always scare me. Oh yeah. One involving Bully Ray putting Matt Cardona through a flaming table. And then my other ones, I think all I really have to do is mention the three people that were on one side of this match, and you'd probably understand. But the second gear crew. (laughs) Epic, yeah. I've seen, well, now they're kind of split up, but I've seen two matches with all three of them. And yeah, Matthew Justice jumping off the scaffold, you know, doors, tables, glass, insanity. When I think of fire, I in H two O, I think of uh, Kirk, uh, Brandon Kirk hitting the psycho driver on mm. Bam onto a, a TV on fire. Oh, I think I've seen that one. Yeah, yeah, uh, I love both those guys. Shout out to Brandon Kirk and Bam Sullivan. Uh, two, two guys, yes, definitely a, a fan of them myself. Hoping to have them on sometime soon. We'll see. Hopefully. <laughs> I mean, I, I want to have them on. Yeah, they're just busy as busy as hell. Oh, yeah. it, hell. It took me, like I said, over a year to get John Wayne Murdoch. So, oh, yeah, I can I can be persistent if I need to be. <laughs> You should, because they're both really cool guys. And, like, the stories I'm sure they have is insane, so. Oh, yeah. Yep, I can only imagine. You know, hell, uh, Neil Diamond Cutter. That was that was an entertaining one. Shout out to Neil. Oh, Shout dude. Out to Neil. Love the dude. Absolutely love him. All right. That was, yep. Oh, next next question. No, it's fine. I It's a a little bit of a tangent that we don't have to uh, go down. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no problem. All right. So I have some of my hobbies displayed behind me. What sure. are some that you have, if any? Because I know wrestling can take up a lot of time. Uh, Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's really just wrestling. Like I play, uh, like, I play RPGs, like, video games and stuff, but, like, yeah. not as much as I'd obviously like to. But I'm a big uh, Fallout and, like, the Elder Scrolls fan. Okay. Um, mostly Fallout. Like, Fallout New Vegas is, like, my favorite video game of all time. Uh, but, yeah, other than that, not nah, just it's just wrestling. Like, you know, I have a, you know, full-time job, and then after work I go to the gym or I go to training – and then on the weekends, like I'm just traveling for shows and stuff. So, I mean, it, there's not not as much time as hot for hobbies that like I wish, but I'm. It's a great problem to have. Oh, so no. like, yeah, I can totally understand. If, you know, you're hell. Like I, I talk with people about the podcast. My my recording schedule. It seems like very shortly after I start planning for a month the next month it's like boom it's like majority of the way filled already i'm like holy crap because your whole june is booked yeah i remember you you posted that like it's pretty much all booked which is crazy yeah like three or four three or four recordings a week the entire month wild (laughs) it's nuts like I've got, I've got some that I'm really looking forward to. A couple that I, well, I'll have to probably get to them in July. But there's a couple that I had to reschedule. But uh, one promotion that I was a huge fan of back when they were running was Lucha Underground. Like I loved it. Me too. <laughs> mm. Hot then take, hot take here. No, <laughs> no, I loved it. Like yeah, there. I've had a few people on from there, including a uh, famous B, 
had him on. And in his intro that I, you know, like I had you do, I didn't even ask. He did it. He just did it on his own. The four, two, three, get same that he <laughs> did on there. Yeah. Boom. That's his intro. I'm like, oh, dude. Okay, you got me, man. And Sick. but next month, Marty the Moth. <laughs> That's really cool. He, how do you he, like? How do you like get these guys on? Do you just? I guess you just reach out like you did with, with me. But like, it's like there's a clear difference between like reaching out to me and reaching out to a guy like that. But he he randomly followed my podcast Instagram page. Oh, that's pretty and cool. I was like, I'm gonna shoot my shot here. Yeah, you, and then I boom. mean, you gotta. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. But uh, next question I have here: What are some must-haves on a road trip? Uh, energy drinks. Uh, anybody who has ever been in a car with me. Knows I drink way too many. I'm too caffeine dependent. Uh, what else? Uh, beef jerky. Mm. I love love beef jerky. Uh, road trip essentials. You know what? I'll just and water. Stay water. stay hydrated, folks. That's what I'll say as well. Rehydrate yourself from the energy drinks. Yeah, yeah, for for sure. You can't just drink energy drinks and nothing else. Even though that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, that, that would. <laughs> yeah, I'm. My wife is always telling me I need to drink more water because I'm a bit of a Dr Pepper fiend. I I'm a bit of a uh, diet Pepsi guy myself. I I think I've opened maybe three cans while we've recorded this. So I uh yeah. I love diet soda. I love, I love caffeinated beverages. But oh yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. Also, well, you, gas oh. station food. I love mm. gas station food, like hot gas station food. I know it sounds disgusting, but I also am from like the Northeast, so we have like Wawa and Sheets and Royal Farms and mm. stuff like that. So like, our gas stations like have like. I won't say real food because, like, let's not pretend yeah. like it's not gas station food. But I just, oh man, I don't, we, I don't know what it is. I know that sounds disgusting, but I love it. We have a, a a chain around here called Casey's that they're known for like pizza. So, like, oh, okay, man. yeah. So I I get what you're talking about there. Definitely, it, yeah, and especially like, again, I know it sounds gross, but like if it's under a heating lamp. Or it's on like one of those little like conveyor belt things. The, those little I roller am, things. I'm in there. I'm in oh, there. Dude, those those roller thing, the the taquitos. Oh, good. Those ones that have the taquitos on. Oh my god, my wife. Good. She, she loves them, and you know what? I love them. We grab about two or three at a time. No, most definitely. That's, a, All right. that's the essentials. Yeah. Oh, Those totally. are the essentials for a road trip. Oh, totally. All right. You know, kind of a segue from that question with the drink talk. With the name of a show like I have, I would feel weird if I didn't have this question. Favorite sure. drink, whether it be alcoholic or non, because I'd like to tell people just because it says drinking at Moe's does not mean that the drink has to be alcoholic. Sure. Uh, non-alcoholic uh, drink would be Diet Pepsi. Uh, alcoholic drink will go. Uh, I love any wine cooler, any hard seltzer, twisted tea. Oh, um, the tea. I, I, I love those twisted oh, yes. teas. Oh, yes. Uh, surf sides have been a new a new thing in my life. I, I like those a lot. Okay. Um, but also just dark rum straight as well is okay. uh, incredible, especially after a match. It's awesome. Mm. Oh, so, yeah. 
I, I can imagine after the rigors of a match, you getting uh getting a shot like that would yes be pretty damn nice. I love a sell. Uh, that's what I love uh, wrestling at like VFWs and mm. uh, some Elks Lodges or not Elks Lodges. Uh, Knights of Columbus because they have bars okay. yeah. in them. So I like going to the bar and hanging out after my match. Ah, uh, yeah. but it is uh very cool and fun. But yeah, those are my those are my uh, essentials. Also, favorite energy drink would be the. Ultra Sunrise uh, Monster, the orange can. Mm, that 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 is a good one. I I know uh, Mountain Dew used to have those amps. I think they really only got the original lime one now, or the the kind of like the amped up Mountain Dew. Oh, flavor. the Mountain Dew. Uh... Yeah, it was with the new the like they're almost like tall boy cans. I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, they they used to have like cherry, and that one was one of my favorites. Now there's oh god, there's a couple of them, but my absolute favorite that I've been getting a lot recently is uh, C4. They have this. Uh, Oh, it's yes. like a popsicle branded one, but a cherry popsicle. Oh, the new ones, the new popsicle ones are so good. Oh yeah, freaking. They delicious. have a they have an orange creamsicle one that's Ooh. like the, but it's like different than their orange cream like other flavor. They have two. They have one that like tastes similar to like how the rains do, uh, and then they have one that like tastes like. Uh, uh, now I'm noticing I have a problem because I'm, <laughs> but <laughs> they're like like ice cream. But no, yeah, no. My my wife, when it comes to you know me being a Dr Pepper fiend, she has said that I have a problem because I can you know people say you know there's I've heard it said that uh, oh you you can barely tell the difference between. Diet and regular, and I'm like, no, you you give me whatever variation of it, I will be able to tell you what it is. So as a Dr. Pepper aficionado, I will have to say, this is uh, to go off of our road trip uh, mm. essentials. Um, as a, uh, a Wawa guy myself, because I live in New Jersey, uh, the they have like the Coca Cola like remix machines. Mm -hmm. Doctor Pepper Cherry Vanilla. Oh, that is my favorite mix right there. You get a big gulp of that. Oh, you're in there. You oh, are in yeah. there for a road trip. Oh yeah, we got a a sub place right across the street from you know right down the street from my place, and they have one of those. Oh God! I get the large, and that is the that is the yep. drink I get there. See, this, every see? Time. this is my target demographic. Now we're talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man! Wow, I could go on for a while on that one. But last but not least, best advice you have for anybody wanting to get into wrestling? Oh man, I almost said don't. <laughs> <laughs> you, you would. You know what? I I've I'll be heard the first that, to say one. that either. Oh God, I hear that one all the time. This is my actual advice. The first few months, if not first few years, is going to be really, really hard. Um, um and. Be aware that it's not just physical. The physical, like, yeah. turmoil that you put yourself through is not the worst of it. Yeah. At most times, it is the best part of it. Because the emotion, like, the emotional and mental um, stuff that goes on is way worse. Um, that's what I'll say. And, like, not to get like uh weird and personal or whatever but like in my experience like 
the better things are going, the worse things will get. Um, you know, it, it is like a game of like peaks and valleys and the higher the peak, the lower the valley will be right after it. Uh, in my own, uh, personal experience. Uh, so be aware of that. Have a good support system outside of wrestling. Find something outside of wrestling that like when wrestling gets like too difficult to deal with, uh, mentally, you could take a step back, not saying that like, you know, don't wrestle or whatever, but like, or don't take time off because that's for the birds. Like, just take take a day or two to play video games yeah. or whatever you need to do, and then get back. Let into it. It, like, let it simmer for a day or so, and then go back. In. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, that's like the best case scenario. Like, yeah. Um, but don't be like, oh, I'm taking time off for mental health or whatever, because like I guarantee you that like the minute you get back into wrestling, your mental health will be in the toilet again. And because you didn't learn how to cope with it when you're in it. Um, so that's why I'm saying find a support system outside of it uh, that doesn't revolve around wrestling. Um, you know, whether that be family, friends, uh, significant other, um, you know, some sort of yeah. internet chat room or whatever yeah, the hell. Whatever um, it might be. Yeah, but that's my advice. Like, that's real, not sarcastic advice. No, uh, I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that but, definitely helps, yeah. you know, life in general, having, you know, that good support system and, you know, some that when, you know, stuff just is seeming to uh, go in the shitter, for the lack of a better term, yep. you got that thing that you can step back for like a little bit, you know, get your mind off of it, and then boom, get back into it. Yep. And, and that's the thing too. Like you have to, you have to get back into it. You can't just be, you can't just take time off because of whatever, like this is like, it is like, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, but like the marathon only gets longer. The more time you take away from it. Like the marathon isn't going to get easier if you take time away, it just isn't the case, unfortunately. Yeah. But that's just how it is. Especially like when you're so early on, it like it wrestling is a what have you done for me lately kind of business. Especially when you don't have years of work to be like, oh, actually this. Yeah. Like, you know, it it really is just like you got to get your face out there. You got to get your name out there. You got to keep pushing through like, yeah, because you know, if, if someone sees someone once, they're going to be like, Oh, okay. And you know, you know how many times like you've seen wrestlers and like never seen them again. Yeah. I mean, and then you don't even, you don't even think about it because it's like, how could you even think about a guy that you've only seen one time? But like, if you, you know, uh, you know, they see you all the time, then they're, you know, then you're programmed into their brain. Uh, yeah. So that's also a piece of advice. Just get out there, get on as many shows as possible uh, and just keep pushing, keep doing it. Uh, there's nothing better than the feeling of just like, I have two, three, four shows this weekend. Like I, you know, I can just keep going. And then the weekend after that, like, I, like with, uh, you know, you posted your schedule, like online or whatever, like nothing, nothing is better than seeing that. Is it seeing that your schedule for the next month is already booked up? Like you can't add another booking, even if you tried. That's yeah. the best feeling. Oh, um, yeah. Cause like this stuff gives us purpose, you know, yeah. like, making art gives us purpose. So like having a full schedule and you're like, man, like this is, this is awesome. Um, oh, yeah. you know, it's, it's really gratifying, but, um, <laughs> totally. Yeah. That's what I'll say for adv- ad- advice. Oh no. Great advice. Before we go, where can people find you social media wise? So if they don't already have their eyes on the plexus, they can go ahead and get them there. 
Social media wise, uh, Instagram and X are both Troy Lock Pro. Um, and then my Facebook is just Troy Lock. Um, yeah, and then uh, Pro Wrestling T links are in all of my uh, social media. I believe it's just uh, Troy Lock Forever Shop. Okay. Be. But uh, yeah. We'll get we'll get all that in the description. Oh, yeah. For sure, but for sure. Is. I just wanted to plug oh, yeah. it or whatever. Oh, no. Plug away. Well, that is about all I have. I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to me tonight. Oh, and thank you for having me of, on. Oh, yeah. Best of luck out there in June with uh, especially that triple shot weekend. I oh, will, yes. I will be keeping my eye out. For sure, for sure. Yeah, thank you for having me on. It was a pleasure.